here we go. Hello, everybody. Hello, 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 everybody. I think y'all caught me just saying, and here we go. <laughs> yeah. it's, all, it's all, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, it's all, it's, it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, we're professionals. We're Clearly. professional amateurs. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? My name is Justin. And I'm Philip. And you're watching or listening to episode 464. Dang it, broadcast. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, what hell of a week. Uh, mm -hmm. Phil, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. Trying to recover. <laughs> Trying to recover mm. from what just happened on Wednesday. Uh, <laughs> that was for me. <laughs> yeah, that they, was specifically for me. <laughs> they they heard what we had to say, and even though they had prepped the stuff ahead of time, they heard yours specifically, and they were like, "This is a uh, this is actually for Phil. This is in dedication." <laughs> yeah, it that was specifically towards me. Like everything there that was on Wednesday, it was for me, and I. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for making the rest of my year. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz uh we were we were pretty concerned about you know what Nintendo had to offer because I mean this, we could we could talk about that story about like how our respective GameStops had like a Nintendo rep over there and as far as they they were telling people it's like you know just focus on like Pikmin stuff for now. We got but we got some stuff in the works as well and we kind of now know what's going on. They were definitely cooking and uh it's looking pretty tasty overall for the rest of this year and even bleeding into 2024 i mean true geez, dude they do have to kind of prep for that as well so but yeah. yeah before we get into that big boy mm. um justin yeah a certain game came out this week i'm sure i'm sure you have it in front of you yes <laughs> I, I do have do do should i go small ahead small indie title Nothing small big. indie title yeah all right, I guess I will jump into it. Uh, we got we got a big pickup, uh, from just a small company. Probably never yeah, heard of them. Yeah, nothing big. I think yeah. I've never heard of this indie company. It's yeah, Square Enix. Apparently, they made sixteen of these. Uh, a Final Fantasy. <laughs> what do you mean by final? <laughs> <laughs> no, and it's been more than sixteen. It's, it's been, been more than 10, sixteen. Two, Thirteen. 10, two. two. Lightning returns. Lightning returns. The world of Final Fantasy. The world. Final Fantasy Tactics. Theater Rhythm. Chaos. <laughs> Chaos. <laughs> Paradise. Oh my God. Talk about racing. <laughs> oh my God. I don't even know where to go from there. What is it? Crystal Defenders on the Wii. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, the Crystal or Crystal Chronicles. My life as a king. My life as a dark lord. Mystic Quest. Go, yes. Oh God. Not, yeah. not Final Fantasy USA. <laughs> <laughs> USA. But yes, we have uh we got the pickup like right here. Uh I had played the demo, I believe, around Sunday, and I was already sold on that at, at that point. Uh or even Saturday. But uh then, you know, I had to like just go ahead and do the quick pre order. I wasn't able to go and pick it up until like uh yesterday, and I just played through uh, whatever I could of it. I don't even know how the chapters are like segmented, but I I yeah. made some progress, made some progress, and uh, as far as like a really cool like our action RPG, it's fantastic. But we've been hearing a lot of discourse over the course of internet since the game was released, and it's not just like review bombing for review bombing purposes. It's it's also I personally feel has been kind of prolific like over like as far as like Twitter Discord if anything. Mm -hmm. Because, like, people are just talking about... I mean, I don't want to, like, start off with saying, like, oh, here's some hearsays about, like, people's experience and it's all negative stuff. Like, nah, it's... it. First of all, my personal take, uh, it's fantastic so far. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yes. It's super fun. And I think I love it for that because, you know, I'm I'm also an RPG enthusiast and I'm so used to, like, turn-based stuff. Uh, but I also like uh, things where there's a lot more, like, action-oriented, like, platformers and the like. And, you know, just... Like action adventure games um and so far i can't really give you like the full like deep dive into this one because i'm only like so far into it like maybe just an hour or two in but uh it's great for me but i i really want to kind of dive into more of the game to kind of get my my thoughts together as far as like what does this final fantasy mean as like this being a, another entry into like a whole like like series for the whole fan uh, franchise but as as a as a as my favorite rpg series is east i understand the action like this like catered towards me mm -hmm. but final fantasy has been one of my favorite rpg series like i do love 
Every one of them except two. Fuck you two. Um, uh, but uh, I I don't like Final Fantasy two. That game sucks. It's not it's not good. Was there another one I, aside from that that you didn't like? I think there was that I personally just won't probably play too much. Probably. I say this out loud, people are gonna get me for this. But you know what? I'm already in. I'm already in everyone's shit list for Pokemon Emeralds or uh, third gen. So might as well just go for <laughs> no, it all right, all right. and say. Might as well go for it and say Final Fantasy VIII. Oh, okay. That's okay. Yeah, that that's rough because <laughs> it's better than the two, but you know. <laughs> better than two. I'll have it's to, not uh... even that two and eight are bad. It's the way they handle experience points. But I think I've gone over it where it's mm -hmm. like you, with two, it's depending on how many times you attack, you'll gain attack. And it depends oh, on your yeah. swords and, and if you use magic. Yeah, it's... And then for defense purposes, you have to let yourself get hit. Yeah, it's a mess. Uh, well, except for the defense purposes, it's kind of like on par with old school, like Pokemon EV training. You, mm -hmm. have to f you have to find the specific mons with that specific like attribute that they give off whenever you, de you defeat them. But the HP things in defense is kind of now. Now pretend that that was the entire mechanic of the game. <laughs> like that. That's how. Like that's not an optional thing. That's just how, that's how you progress. Yep. That's yeah, very annoying. That's very that's annoying. nuts. And I'm gonna replay it because uh I have the <laughs> yeah, I'm that's playing right. the, the remasters and I'm just like, well, two's there, I I kinda have to. You were showing a bit of uh I think it was one, right? One. Yeah. yeah. It it was kinda crazy because it it you see it like how simplified it was like back in the day, but yet there's like there's a charm to it, like you could really get attached to it. You know, if mm -hmm. If every single Final Fantasy was like that, I mean, obviously it's not. Um, May I can understand like a lot of like disputes over like the the shift towards like action RPG. I mean, they they've been like kind of going like through that. Um, I guess more notably towards like fifteen and onwards, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, some of the bigger shifts, I would say one is one is obviously where it started, turn based, all the way through. Mm -hmm. uh, and we call the other games turn-based, right? But they're mm -hmm. actually turn-based in the loosest sense because it goes, once you hit Final Fantasy IV, the active time battle system starts. Oh, so really? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you get that all the way up until 9, excluding excluding 8. You get that all the way up until 9. Even 8 has that system. It's the way you mm -hmm. gain XP in 8. Ah, uh, okay, I see. But, uh... It's this thing. It's this thing where like you have uh, bars, and these uh -huh. bars will hit. They'll be filled, and once it's filled, you're ready for attack. And so the entire mechanic is you're always you're always moving menus. You're not stopping. You're like okay, uh, uh, let's say four for instance. You're just like Cecil do this, uh, Kane do this, Rydia have this ready to go, and then once the bar's filled, then your your attacks go through. But your enemies uh. have the exact same bar, and so it's a it's a kind of a back and forth like who's gonna go first who's got the fastest speed mm -hmm. okay i got you and then seven introduces the limit breaks which is essentially getting hit while you're waiting and stuff like that yeah i see oh man so I... really really turn-based ones like like specifically turn-based it's one two three and ten okay i gotcha yeah now, I know that we are talking about Final Fantasy, but I did want to like pivot just real quick to a side tangent. Mm -hmm. Involves uh, another great game that had came that came out like last month, uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, so I got two bit of news. One, uh, I did get uh, well, first of all, I did beat the game uh, as of last Wednesday, and um, hell yeah, I I got a lot to say, but I will keep it pretty brief. Uh, it's phenomenal. First and foremost, it's probably one of the best games I could possibly like say like out of my accumulative experience with playing games. But I I also know part of it's like emotionally and also like, like nostalgically like charged. But yeah, it, it's it, it's it's fantastic, honestly. As far as just like the direction for Zelda games and I guess open world just as a whole, like it it did it again. <laughs> and the uh, the other thing uh, is that. Um, it's so funny because like how it started, it all started with the tweet <laughs> where it's like, ah, I know. <laughs> well now you have the, uh, 
the Tears of the Kingdom Switch, Justin. I think you should pair a certain uh, satisfied grip with it. And I was like, there's no way I got it. <laughs> so and it looks good. It looks Tell me it doesn't. Looks fantastic. It's a great compliment, like to just like this specific OLED <laughs> Switch model. Although you can definitely just pair it up with the other like Nintendo Switch they have from oh, yeah. like OG yeah. Nintendo Switch to OLED. Like it it works perfectly. It's great. Now the, really clean. the only thing I'm missing is that Switch Pro controller, but that's coming out. You, you or got least, it ordered, right? I did, uh, but it won't be coming out until like next month. <laughs> All right. I mean, at least you ordered it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that that's yeah. pretty much it. It, it. It's fantastic. So it it's definitely up there as far as like game of the year. It's in the conversation for sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to say. I don't want. I don't want to. Yeah, like. like say, yeah. I don't want to say that and something like Spider-Man 2 or Stargirl comes out and it's like, well, but I think it's pretty safe bet to say it's game of the year. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's like saying Elden Ring was game of the year immediately when it came out. You were right. No other game was going to top that. And that was in March of last year. Mm -hmm. That was pretty early. This is May. So it's still kind of early. I think it's just like, there's like a level of ambition that you can really like, derived from like this game there's so many things that i mean also the fact that it's a sequel so it, it's one of those things where yeah it's, it's not just like treading new waters it's like having an established like platform and then just expanding on that mm -hmm. to like every extent like honestly if i had to review this like game it would be like one aspect would just be that every single bit about to your or breath of the wild uh has evolved in some shape or fashion with the new abilities and um i think well anyway just to keep it short it, it's great it's great yeah. it's great all right bye ladies and gentlemen that was it for us okay <laughs> <laughs> there you go that's the, that's the podcast that's hey. the podcast hey hey anyway there's nothing else that happened <laughs> yeah yeah nothing important nothing important no no maybe something like no. nintendo Ugh. dropping Damn. some new things oh. You know, no, I, what's more important is Sonic's birthday was yes. Oh today. yeah, yeah, that's true. Happy birthday to the uh, Happy blue birthday, bird. Happy birthday, blue hedgehog. I'm sorry, Sega treats you like this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. They've been doing pretty damn good with Sonic recently. This is true, and it seems yeah. like they're getting like catching a lot of momentum since. Honestly, well, they've been doing it for a while now, but I think Sonic Frontiers like really kind of like should pave the way. While it's like 2D Sonic was well established, it's already really good. So mm -hmm. obviously the next like best thing was to like release like a whole compilation of just the uh, the classic games and put it into a physical copy that people can have. So that came out as well this week. Yep. And uh Sonic Superstars is also like a big thing. That also got like announced at TG or not T TGS uh Summer Game Fest. Summer and Games Fest it appeared in the Nintendo Direct with a little more info than normal and then there was the Sonic Birthday info. The, the Lego Sonic collab looks hilarious. It was CG, but I kind of understand what they're going to do. It's just going to be a whole skin swap of the game to Legos, which I'm going to bring the Lego thing up again because I remember saying this a long time ago as a, my idea mm -hmm. for another franchise that could have worked. But what we got instead was leagues better than what I thought was going to be. So, But the, the Lego Sonic idea is really funny. Mm -hmm. I like it. Oh, also a quick thing before we like really jump into that. Uh Fire Emblem. Uh yeah. the one that released for like for the West, the our first Fire Blazing Emblem. Blazing Sword. The, the Blazing Japanese title is the Blazing Sword. The Blazing Sword is uh, now available on NSO, so uh Yes, I was playing it. Oh nice. Good. Uh one hundred percent recommend that because that is like that's the origin like for us as far as like us knowing yeah. about this franchise obviously like i think it started first with like smash brothers melee right where it was like it was marth and uh, melee was the first time the west ever got a fire emblem like content in general yeah but we got marth we got roy and roy was only put in to promote the new game which was the binding mm -hmm. blade oh and we still never got that game <laughs> so we have a mark in chat actually he was saying i would join but i'm kind of out here uh with the wife uh okay 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 there's a mma place next to a chuck e cheese i would have put it i would have put an mma place right there too 
That's a... Find, find the ball pit, find the arena. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> but Fire Emblem's great. If you have NSO, if you have the expansion pack, you have the Game Boy Advance app, let's play it. Yeah. Even if, you're, if, even if you don't know Fire Emblem too well, it's a good introductory game. For sure. Yeah, I think uh, it's one of the games that doesn't like really hold your hand a lot. Like a lot Except of... Except at the beginning. Well, it's true, it's true. They kind of have to the, tell you exactly the, the, how to make these things work, but... Well, the, the the infamous thing about the game is that it starts off with a, a, essentially a three-hour tutorial. And it's a... Uh, the game is just like, hey, this is what you can do. And this is what you can do. And then it's like, yo, I kind of get it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you have to remember, this was the game that first came out to us. Nintendo thought we were a little too stupid for this game. <laughs> Not Mystic back, Quest back again. Not USA. Yeah. So, like, this is the game that has this long tutorial. And in Japan, the game also has the tutorial. But if you have the Binding Blade and you beat the game, there's a code, and you use the code at the beginning, hmm. you could skip that whole tutorial part. Whoa. That's not a thing here. You I didn't even know about actually, that. Yeah, you have to actually play through all of that. Crazy. So I'm still in the tutorial. Because I was just like, man, I forgot how rough the beginning is. But it's got a really interesting story out the gate. So, yeah, I, I just remember like, I I I, I literally just did like the Coliseum bit, <laughs> like several times nice. over to overlevel everybody. And honestly, I feel like that was the first playthrough I ever had. I feel like if I didn't do that, I would not be ready for like the latter parts of the game. It like it gets pretty hard. <laughs> it's tough tough as hell but it's yeah. good mm -hmm. lynn is one of the best fire emblem characters yeah and you know love to see, i'm probably love to see it. i'm one of those folks in the corner saying that like fire emblem needs to bring back like the sickest animations that they used to have and Dude, um I, yeah i was playing the, yeah i was seeing the battles and i was like yo this is just it's clean it's fast it's fluid everything works real quick and it's right back into it yeah yeah and honestly that's why i praise um engage a lot because it feels like it's kind of a return to form not just on the mechanics but also like as far as the style of it mm -hmm. i think all the uh cool battle animations are super fluid they're also really like sick and it doesn't feel like with three houses like one of my issues was the fact that a lot of like movement stuff obviously some character npcs get repeated but mainly is when you see your um units go into combat a lot of their usual like moves are all kind of like the same and granted, like classes will have like same animations and whatnot, but like, yeah, I just feel like this one was a little bit more flourished. So I appreciate mm -hmm. them for doing that. But yeah, it's good. Uh, can't wait for when they put Fire Emblem the Sacred Stones. Then we're mm. really in the money. Then we're really cooking because that game is godlike. So, but yeah. All right. Um, let's see. I think that's uh, everything. Uh, we talked about Fire Emblem, Final Fantasy 16 for a bit. Um, Sorry, time. sorry, Mark. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, and then of course, like last, uh, as of last week, we were talking about, uh, or at least prior to the actual Nintendo Direct, we had like some like predictions here and there. Uh, yeah. I will say that you got a lot of them on on the dot. I was like, yeah, whoa. I was, a little, I was a little shocked too. Uh, I won't lie to you. That that's a lot of research and looking into leaks and rumors and like on reddit forms and, and, and just doing my overall research to make sure i knew what the hell i was talking about but some of those were long shots and i i <laughs> holy shit i did not think i was gonna get some of those correct um mm -hmm. i'm not a god <laughs> i'm not a, i'm not someone who can see the future like that i just was just doing really good research and what makes sense at the time that's crazy there, there's st and then there's still stuff i wasn't even expecting i still got that kind of stuff Mm. so really happy with it would you want to go like step by step with the nintendo director or do you want to kind of like, go to your highlights and uh, maybe some like unexpected no, ones no, I'll, I'll do i'll do we, if we're gonna start to direct right now i got the list in front of me got let's it do let's do it step by step real quick because there's stuff i actually have to have you explain to me because i won't know this so and oh. that starts with the first announcement well, oh yeah so yeah the nintendo direct happened on wednesday seven in the morning i didn't get to actually fully watch it um at the time until i got home okay. until i got home from work but i now Same. understand what happened i i've literally been watching some of these trailers 
two very specific ones I've watched like 20 times now. Um, <laughs> because I'm, you have no idea. But we'll start with the first announcement. And they opened the show with something we both predicted might not be there, but also could be there, and it's 50-50. And it is the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet uh, T- DLC. So the Hidden Treasures of Area Zero expansions. They yeah. Them. Actually, yeah, I was I got that right about this one. So essentially... It, you did it, get it right. You, I said it wasn't going to be there. I was going to say, like, yeah, they'll, they'll probably just, like, give you some, like, new, like, footage here and there, but nothing, like, too big. Um, and they just kind of show a trailer about, like, just kind of more of a dive as far as, like, the areas you'll be in on the respective, like, uh, DLCs. Uh, obviously, the one for Teal Mass is the one that's coming out in, like, summer. We don't... I forgot what happens with the, uh, well, the other one. I think uh, it's important to note one thing. Hmm. They got delayed. I don't know if you saw the release dates, but like they went from summer fall to fall winter. Oh, okay. That I think that was the big takeaway from there is that they got they kind of got delayed. I was because it's already summer. It's summer now, yeah, yeah. La- last time we had Sword and Shield, this is around the time we got the Isle of Armor. So I was just kind of like, where, where is it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. But yeah, I'll, I'll definitely dive into those uh, DLC when uh, it made, it's made available. They also made it like a, a little small thing. I'm not sure exactly what the occasion for it is, but like when a shiny is involved, then you're definitely in on it. But uh, they're doing the uh, the chest form of Gimme Ghoul as like um just yeah. like like limited run type of uh, raid battle that you can have. Uh, I saw that. I'm not sure if you all know about this, but uh, for some reason, Scarlet and Violet just do not have any Pacific. Uh, I guess, lack, for lack of better words, just any type of uh, mentions or just no... Uh, I don't even have the right, like, proper words for it. I think just in comparison to, like, one previous game, for ex- for instance, uh, Legends Arceus, where, like, they do okay. very specific things as far as, like, the encounters for Shiny Pokemon, how to even, like, track them. They're absolutely non-existent in Scarlet and Violet, which makes it even difficult. And apparently, Shiny, Gimme Ghoul, it's kind of hard to piece out the moment you see it. So Jeez. you have to just catch it, and then you know you'll see it. Cult of God. Yeah, Man. because because they really don't even show it, even like in any other like situation. You have to like just you have to look at the Pokemon directly or have it out in the field. Otherwise, if you look at the icon of it like in your Pokebox or you know, and that's really the only instance you can really see it. It doesn't really show it. <laughs> so it's I don't know. They they had some uh, design choices on that one. I think the teal mask I, okay when they first announced hmm. the dlc i was i was saying oh teal mask kind of sounds whatever so it's what like it, it kind of reminds me of the isle of armor where i wasn't really excited for isle of armor that's good comparison. But i was more excited yeah. for the second dlc yeah um watching this i think i'm the opposite now i think teal mask actually looks really cool with the japanese mask like kind of theme and the countryside kind of like looking area mm. and then our indigo disc doesn't look all that amazing i get that there's like a cool like basement or something like there's like the the world it's like different environments mm. but like that kind of feel that kind of feels forced <laughs> like there's the lava area here's the beach area i <laughs> know uh, i get like, that then I don't know. I think the countryside sounds cool. Mm-hmm. It looks better than what I expected it to. Now, granted, I'm the wrong person to ask because I haven't even gotten past the first gym. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> oh my I God. did the first gym. I did. I did the bug gym. Yes, the cooker, the the one that was cooking. Yeah, the yeah, chef. yeah. All right, I beat her, and it wasn't even because I didn't want to play it. I was playing God of War, and I just never went back. That's true. So, that's, that's fair. It, yeah, because I love Pokemon, but I don't want to. I need to actually sit down and play Scarlet and Violet this year sometime. Mm-hmm. But I think that's going to be hard to do with how many games we're going to talk about today. That yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, you, you get to a certain point where it's like it's it's uh, <laughs> Mark's but, like uh, Justin, what think, <laughs> what do you what do you think about it real quick? Um, the DLC itself. Honestly, it, it's weird because like I'm. I'm kind of deep diving into like other people's like discourse on like the series and uh, Scarlet and Violet is one where it's like, it, it's kind of going the same thing as Sword and Shield has gone through as far as like the aesthetic, the direction, like everyone loves like the new Pokemon, but uh, some things feel like recycled and like the 3d like open world could look 
a little bit better. Uh, I I agree on the uh, I agree on the overworld aesthetic. Certainly, it could look a little bit better, but I think uh, as far as like the Pokemon designs and their direction on like animation, I mean this this is kind of off tangent, but like that that's that makes sense to me. Uh, but looking at the DLC now, uh, you know, I have. I have a general interest in like both ones. I think my general interest yeah. still kind of lies like a little less on Teal Mask and more like towards like the later DLC. Like, I'm, yeah. there's something about I think there's just I feel like there's just a little bit more like story like substance there that I would probably like and because like they're introducing a new like well they introduce characters all over the place but yeah I'm I'm just curious as to like you know there's one area where it's like it's it's a whole like region and the other one's actually just like a sanctioned off like isolated um yeah island well it's a makeshift island really and i'm just I, curious about that because i think that's a little bit more battle focused and i was like mm, okay uh, i guess we'll have to wait uh, a little bit longer than we thought but it'll come up yeah it'll come out i'm just kind of uh, looking forward to uh the new mons that'll be like released I mean, oh, yeah. yeah, it looks like uh, there's more in data entries for them. I'm not sure if they're going to be wild encounters, but I'm always hyped whenever like starters will just show up in the wild. Mm-hmm. It's like, yes, finally. Although I think uh, that was definitely a lot more of a scarcity like back then. Now it's a little bit more ex- of an expected thing. Yeah. But yeah. Um. Then we went to the highlights and there was the first real highlights. And uh, I'll do some of these pretty quickly. Sonic okay. Superstars still looks good. I think that was Switch gameplay we were watching. I hope so. Because you you could tell it was a little bit uh, like resolution was a little down. But there's important key things to take from there. It's 60 frames per second from what I noticed. That for a 2D Sonic game, thank you. Um, it looks like the graphical hit is fine. Like it doesn't look terrible. So I'm I, I'm thinking the Switch versions are going to be my version. Mm-hmm. Um, they confirmed that the powers are tied to the Chaos Emeralds. That's something I didn't think I was Chaos. Chaos. <laughs> um, also that swinging area, like that looks 3D. Oh, that's yeah. That's the special zones. Cool. All right. All right. That is the special zones for the Chaos Emeralds. So I was like, okay, that sounds awesome. All of that sounds cool. We saw a little bit of new environments here and there, but I couldn't really remember them. Just, it looks good. I'll come back to Sonic Superstars in a little bit. Mm. towards the end of this towards the end uh palia was this free to play uh, oh cozy anyway just just, <laughs> just kind of <laughs> fortnite look alike yeah it doesn't look uh, amazing <laughs> so we'll just skip that it really one. does look at fortnite doesn't it <laughs> it looks like goddamn fortnite dude there's uh, something about it persona 5 tactica we knew this was happening um this was already confirmed for switch in japan so mm-hmm. it looks good. Uh November 17th. Un- unfortunately, there's another game that day. Oh, don't worry, uh, we'll get there. Oh yeah, we'll get there. And that unfortunately, I at first I was like, oh yeah, November 17th. Yo, Persona 5, I'm in there. You know what I'm saying? I love mm-hmm. Persona. They and really the expanded game, that universe. And then the game got announced here, and then I was like, Well, sorry, Persona, you're gonna have to wait a little bit. Because <laughs> I got well, I got higher priorities. Uh-huh. I apologize. This is a me thing. But uh, it looks good. I don't know why people are tripping about the art style. It looks unique. It looks yeah. Cool. I get yeah. it. They're a little chibier than normal, but Persona Q was completely chibby. Yeah. So, chill out. It's a game. <laughs> y'all, y'all be fine. <laughs> it's a video game, so don't worry yeah. about it. Uh, the next game was Myth Force. This was a first-person roguelike game that looks like a Saturday morning cartoon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. It looks okay. It looks all right. Yeah, it looks fine. Um, And then Splatoon 3. I was, at first, I was like, okay, you know, they're going to talk about the Splat Fest, whatever. It's ice cream based. It's like, what do you like, vanilla, uh, mint chip, or, or strawberry. strawberry? You didn't even put chocolate. You Damn. Of, anyways. <laughs> well, te- I mean, <laughs> well, te- well, technically speaking. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, the point is, that was the entire announcement. That was it. No DLC, no none, just Splat I Fest. I actually was a little hurt. That they didn't talk about side order because yeah. side order is what I want to see. That mm. that's the whole point of the expansion pass. And it was not here. And I was like, what the again, we're already almost to a year of this game's release in September. 
why are we not talking about side order? Like, how long is this DLC taking? Mm. But, okay. Uh, and then, I don't know about you, Justin, but I, I don't know if I freaked out, but I was shook when this next game showed up. Which one? I didn't think it was going to happen. I just thought they had silently canceled this game, and it actually happened. Wait, which one are we talking about? I started seeing some Magnemites, and then I was like, wait a minute, we just had Pokemon. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, wait a minute, what is this? And then I heard the music, and I was like, shut the hell up. It's Detective Pikachu Returns. They that... actually fucking did it. <laughs> the game is actually releasing. The sequel to this 3DS game is finally showing up. <laughs> I totally uh, forgot there was a sequel. I was more you know, I was just as shocked as you were. I that game got announced in 2018. <laughs> oh, I must have I must have wiped out after that. <laughs> they, they didn't they didn't like release a trailer. They literally said it in a conference. They were like it was a Pokemon thing where they were talking about here's Sword and Shield's coming out. Hey, let's go just came out. By the way, a sequel to Detective Pikachu is in the works, and that's all they said. Oh, oh wow, that's probably why. <laughs> that's and, and Okay, uh, I won't lie to you. It kind of looks rough. I don't know. I don't know. It one hundred percent. Yes. I think again, these a little bit more time to cook, or maybe they just had like that was the the trailer they were gonna release a long time ago. But you know, Nintendo, they got stuff ready to go when things aren't coming out. Mm. So maybe, but I mean, that game just kind of looks like a 3DS game and not the good way. It almost looks like the remaster. <laughs> yeah. Also, another thing they should have done, in my mm. opinion. Um, if you're going to wait this long to release a sequel to Detective Pikachu, I don't know about you, but I don't think Detective Pikachu is really, like, in people's minds anymore. Yeah, I don't think so. It's been long since the movie, and it's been way too long since the game, the 3DS release. If you were going to do this, and it's a sequel, you should have had Detective Pikachu 1 alongside this game. Mm-hmm. In Maybe. my opinion, I'm not even port begging at this point. I mean, like, for consistency's sake, like, it should have been together. Because no one's going to know this this story. Mm. No, no one's going to actually know what's going on in this game. Mm. Uh, and then for people who don't know what it is, it's actually a point-and-click adventure game. It's in yeah. like, the style of yeah, yeah, Monkey yeah. Island and that kind of stuff. So before anybody jumps into what this might be, it's that kind of game. It's actually very easy. It's not. It's meant for like younger audiences. Yeah, but it's cool. It's I think there's a charm story. to it, especially when you heard, <laughs> especially when you hear the thing about Ryan Reynolds I with thought, it. <laughs> I thought that was Will Arnett talking his Pikachu for a minute, mm. and, and I was like, this man is everywhere. He's sweet tooth. He's gonna do this. No, it's not. But it's still like, my God, <laughs> that specific like voice direction for it. Um, but yeah, P- Detective Pikachu returns October sixth. I'm going I'm not gonna lie. When I when I saw like the the quick pan, the first two shots, I legitimately thought it was gonna be Pokemon Legends. <laughs> I was like, I what? So too. I was like, yo, wait a minute, this Hold is a Pokemon Direct, dog. You can't be doing that. <laughs> and then and then I heard the song, and then I heard they say Rhyme City, and I was like, no way, mm. that's crazy. But it happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, next announcement. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh you can't do that to me Nintendo. you can't start that video and not me immediately recognizing the game from the single first note of the song you can't do that to me man you i i can't even believe it's happening i i look at we mentioned the name at the predictions list we mentioned we did it, but yeah. i i was dead yeah. on that it was going to be chrono trigger i am so glad i was wrong i am so happy because everybody and their freaking mothers gets to try out Super Mario RPG for the first time. They even got me too, where it was like, oh, that's that's super cool. Finally, Phil God's Wish. Everyone can now get tried to wait. So wait a minute. Yeah, they, <laughs> they bait and switch you in that trailer because it starts off like this normal SNES opening. And I was like, oh, cool. It's coming to NSO finally. Thank God. It's like the one game they keep forgetting. Every time we talk about NSO on this podcast or anywhere else, I'm just like, why don't we have Mario RPG? That's so 
fucking dumb. It should be on there. It's like literally the quintess one of the quintessential RPGs for the console. And we were always like, yeah, maybe it's just, just a Square Enix thing, you know? Yeah, and then I saw it, I was like, finally, Jesus Christ. And now I understand why we don't have Mario RPG on the NSO. Mm. A full blown remake for this game, dude. And it looks gorgeous. I was like, no way, dude. They're adding all these crazy cutscenes to the things that didn't have cutscenes. Um, the art style is the exact same, so it's got like a little short stubby Mario and short That's stubby a- Bowser <laughs> Peach. Mario it's food. So good. It's so good. Dude, Yoko Shimomura has been confirmed to come back to remaster. Bro. Then, Bro. Oh God, this is literally all I asked for. <laughs> <laughs> relax, relax, relax. Take a moment. Take a moment. I was, this game. <laughs> I was, was going to say that, like, you know, I think the Nintendo Direct won just by doing that. Just by that. And, you know, literally, more to come, dude, right? I was a little snooze fest, honestly, like personally, <laughs> up until this point. Like, and once, the, and honestly, looking at this list, mm-hmm. once this hit, it did not stop. I was like, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Anybody who has never played, so the official title is just going to be Super Mario RPG. They're going to mm-hmm. drop the subtitle because the original is called Super Mario RPG: Legend of the Seven Stars. Um, you lo- you love to see it. This, this game is a certified hood classic, and I, I I don't know how many times I've watched that trailer, dude. I think I've watched it like twenty times or more. That's probably me and Tears of the Kingdom, their trailer. I, I've been wanting and I've and I've been wanting to replay this game and I, honestly, I'm glad I waited. <laughs> um It's so good, dude. It's so good. The music is ma- amazing. If you don't know what the gameplay is like, um it is Paper Mario. This is where Paper Mario gets its mechanics from. Where the the whole idea of it's turn based, but if you tap the button at the right time, you get your move that does more damage. Mm-hmm. This kind of stuff that all stems from this one original game, and it is one of the most unique Mario RPGs you will ever play because it has nothing to do with Paper Mario. It has nothing to do with the Mario and Luigi series. Mm-hmm. It is its own self contained world with characters that are originally designed by Square Enix themselves. And as a matter of fact. It is being developed by Square Enix. That's this cool. is a remake by Square for the Switch. Oh my. <laughs> I need it now. And this comes out November 17th. So guess what? Fuck you, Persona 5. I can't, I can't play <laughs> you that day. <laughs> You're not exist to me. This is, you are not existing is... to me at this point. Mario RPG, I'm in there all the way. If you, if, And I'm so glad we're getting something like this. Because the Switch has been in dire need of a Mario-style RPG. Mm. And this is, like, the best possibility. Like, this is the best time, like... This is the best time canon. I love it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best possible universe that we could have had. Mm. Because it's not an HD 2D like I thought it could have been. They're, they're full-blown 3D, like, models. I am so excited to see what the Final Fantasy boss looks like. Yeah, I'm curious about that. <laughs> I am so curious to see what that secret boss looks like because I'm gonna be freaking out at the visuals, <laughs> or even like the music. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it's because it's got the Final Fantasy battle music, and then when you beat it, it does the the fanfare, which is really funny. Mm. Also, Samus is in the game too. <laughs> she was in the original. She was in the original. She's in the little bed. And yeah, she's like wake me up when Mother Brain, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I can't wait to see her in bed, like and just laying there. Another um, Mar- <laughs> another Metroid cameo in a Mario RPG game. Yep. And dude, that was I can't believe it's happening, dude. I cannot believe that. And this, by the way, this was the rumored SNES remake. There you go. Yeah, you got it. Mm. I'm so hyped. That was one of my favorite announcements. That was my second favorite announcement of this direct. That's fair. So, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I was like, wait. We'll get to we'll uh, get to my favorite. Oh uh, we'll yeah, get to yeah, the yeah, one yeah, yeah. We're critical. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. uh, but 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 they weren't done with the segment because for some random reason they decided to drop two name two games back to back with like the most bare minimal trailer, mm-hmm. and they're both confirmed for next year. So this isn't even something that's coming out soon. Mm-hmm. Um, an unannounced, a new. I'm sorry, a new game 
that has Princess Peach as the main character. There's no title. There's no like. There's barely any gameplay. It kind of looks like a beat 'em up. Mm. So far, yeah. But Peach, but Peach hasn't been a main character since Super Princess Peach on the DS. I really thought it was that gonna was be that. I I really hope not. Uh, the game has not aged well, but <laughs> you know about that, right? The game uses her emotions as her yeah, powers yeah, because she's yeah. a girl. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, that game yeah. Not aged well. <laughs> but but this game does look really interesting. I want to see more of it. I can't really judge it because they barely showed anything. Sure. But Princess Peach getting her own game. Cool. Why not? I'm down with it. 2024. Uh, we'll see more of it probably later this year, honestly. Mm. Uh, and then keep the Mario train rolling because uh, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon is getting a remaster. Ooh. What? <laughs> that means Listen, Dark Moon's my least favorite Luigi's Mansion game out of the three. But it was one. It's one of the games where I'm like, it's stuck on the 3DS. There's no uh, way to really play it. Mm-hmm. There you go. Next year, it's coming out. Uh, this gives me hope that they'll do Luigi's Mansion One as well, um, especially if they touch if they do the 3DS remake and make that HD. That'd mm-hmm. be cool. And I kind of have a, a very small feeling that that's why they didn't really even give it a real name. They didn't show a logo mm-hmm. because I think it's going to be a double pack with Luigi's Mansion and then Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. They both run this on the same engine on 3DS, mm. so that could be a possibility. There's also more smoke to that fire once we get a little bit more into this direct. Um, but we'll, I'll get to that when we get to that. But yeah, uh, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, that's cool. Uh, keep it coming. I like remasters from 3DS. Yeah, hopefully there's yep. there's something in the cards for Fire Emblem as well. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, after that, we got some more highlights. Uh, I'll run through these just like we did last time. Uh, Batman Arkham Trilogy. Look, mm-hmm. listen, I love the Arkham series. I absolutely think they're some of the best games of all time. Anyway. I feel like it's, <laughs> feel like it's super late to put these on here. Mm-hmm. Like, this should have been like year one, year two Switch. And I would have been like, holy shit, the Arkham games. Yo, let's go. Right now. This day and age, maybe not. I mean, Arkham Knight is interesting on Switch. That's a PS4, yeah. Xbox One game. That's 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 gonna be a questionable. Like, how well is that gonna? But you know. Yeah, uh, we do have a little bit more light to shed on this game. By the way, uh, physical copy is confirmed. However, the only Arkham Asylum is on the cart. City <sighs> and Knight. Oh now. no! Yeah, so it's that kind of release. So Uh-oh. take that as you will. But uh, we'll also get to another disappointing one, which hurts me even more. Yeah. We'll get there. I heard yeah, about we'll that. Yeah, we'll get there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gloomhaven? I don't know. It looked like a board game. Uh, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Just Dance? Y- yeah. Anyways, next game, uh, Silent Hope? Uh, kind of looks cool. interesting. It, yeah. it, it, it kind of reminds... A, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, it's an XC game, you know? Ah, uh, fair, fair. Yeah. I got, like... I guess it's because of the isometric, like, look to it. Uh, it does remind me of Dragalia Lost, which unfortunately that's a little bit a of lost, bit. lost media there. But yeah, yeah, a little bit. It wasn't a, it wasn't spectacular, but it looks cool. I mean, budget game one day, maybe. If it's for a good price, maybe. Yeah, it's not a bad game. I've uh, been seeing though. Have... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Uh, I've been seeing physical copies for that one. And it's like, oh, it's gonna do the same thing as uh, what was it? Uh, Trinity uh, Trigger. It's like oh, it's gonna it be really? yeah. It's kind of one of those. Okay, that's cool. Like, so well, it's a big... di- so that is the physical copy of it, is that box? Cool. Yeah, it's kind of like that box. It has like a bunch oh, of like yeah. big stuff. It's like whoa. All right. I wonder if it's the same developer. That'd be cool. Hmm. Uh. Anyways, oh, A Farm. Uh, was that fairy farming game that they showed off at Summer Games Fest and also at a Nintendo Indie Direct? Uh. Yep. Yeah. Next, sir. Unreal Unleashed Two. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I heard the first one's kind of good. I kind of want to give this. Yeah, I heard we'll that see. was really good too. Um, this Apparently next good. one actually looks fun. Uh, Maniac or Manic Ma- Manic Mechanics. That's what it's called. Mm. Um, it reminds me of Overcooked, but your mechanics, and so you're working in garages and building things and stuff like that. So that kind of sounds like a fun four player game. I feel like we we need to get together and actually play through some co-op games and not always just competitive. 
because we always we i'm always after that like, yeah because we always start playing like fighting games and things that are like against each other like smash and whatnot mm-hmm. but we never actually sit down and th- talk about hey let's run diablo together or hey let's <gasps> run Whoa. something like this you know what i mean like yeah. we never actually do that like i have overcooked sitting right here you know what i mean like oh yeah yeah, yeah like stuff like that well definitely uh, yeah we'll uh, definitely need to just like figure out this we'll have to figure out the set i mean obviously if we just hang out then that's just totally fine but like if we want yeah. to actually make that into something then we'll have to figure out exactly how to like get things set up just right yeah uh mario plus rabbit sparks of hopes the last spark hunter honestly that dlc looks better than it initially led on to be mm-hmm. it kind of looks cool apparently the whole world is like rhythm and music based and that uh you got me but <laughs> but uh it came out that day so oh uh, i still haven't initially played through sparks of hope so here's yeah. hoping that i can mm. play it because rayman's next that means that means the rayman dlc is next and that's the big one uh and then right on the goddamn money dude dragon quest monsters the dark prince yeah, I so, didn't think so that, was good. that was the extra title that you were referring to i don't remember <laughs> the dragon quest monsters game yeah so we yeah. we um we talked about that Square Enix had a it's the anniversary of the Monsters series. If you've never know if you don't know what that is, it's the series that started on Game Boy. It's essentially Dragon Quest Pokemon. Hmm, I see, I see. You you use your the monsters as your like party. And so like you're always fusing them, changing them, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so some of the more popular ones that people may know would be like the DS ones. So like Dragon Quest monsters joker joker 2 those are those are very popular and published by nintendo huh. um this, this is the next game in the series since the 3ds release that we never got which was joker 3 oh so this looks cool and for and i guess hero is now this they're doing they're doing that thing where like oh now he's popular in smash and we got to make sure we make him look good yeah like that yeah. that's gonna be our pull for this one so they're doing the hero from dragon quest 4 is this going to be in this game for somebody? So, so this means this takes place around the chapters of the chosen, I guess. Somehow, mm. I don't know. It looks good though. December this year, that's the big December game for them. So I'm cool with that. And then they stop this for a little bit to talk about a, a good old franchise, uh, Pikmin. Oh yes, this, so <clears throat> I'm actually glad that they Pikmin. didn't chew too much on this one. As far as like, <clears throat> this is going to take they up the did, majority of the time. They did enough. I think they did it just enough for me to go, you know what? Pikmin 4 does look really good. And there's like a lot of cool things. They just announced another breed of Pikmin, the Glow Pikmin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. They're, they're the Glow Pikmin and Ice Pikmin. So those are the two new ones coming into this game. They also confirm Rock Pikmin are in the game. So that means every single Pikmin is going to be in this game. That's great. That's what I like to hear. Character customizations here. Um, Olomar has got a weird he looks like a plant now i i don't know i don't understand mm-hmm. uh ochi looks like a good boy um but olimar has a as a as a green dog <laughs> i don't know but the i like the camera perspective i like the over the head camera i actually really like see it more of the world and yeah. i think that nintendo's also playing more into the the world the pikmin live in the theory is that it's earth right but it's yeah. this apocalyptic earth where there's no real like humans anymore it's all these creatures uh. and and they're playing into that a little more here because you get to go inside a house and you're running around in this big old house with the kitchen and the and the tables and like it looks pretty clean really cool. <laughs> for, for a like apocalyptic world yeah i like that i like that a lot and mm. so there's a lot of cool stuff they showed here uh, mm. i'm really excited for it um uh, but justin yeah. Have you ever played the Pikmin series? Uh, three, three deluxe, on three your recommendation. Deluxe? It was like, yeah, good, good. Yeah, it was thirty. It was thirty bucks. I was like, all right, I'll do it. And uh, yeah. yeah, I'm glad you, I took that that job. Have you ever wanted to play the originals? Uh, I was curious about it. Why you ask? Well, because out of the goddamn blue, uh-huh. they also dropped Pikmin one and two. I, what? I didn't mean. I didn't mean <laughs> for those to rhyme, but that was pretty good. Mm. Um. Yeah, Pikmin 1 and 2 got, got shadow dropped. That is not exactly the shadow drop I thought we were going to get. Yeah, yeah. It's specifically talking about GameCube games, but you know what? 
I'm well, not mad. Pikmin, yeah. Pikmin 1 is a certified hood classic. Hold on real quick. Anyways. Um, sorry, Katrina just came in here to say hi. Mm. Uh, so, that game looks really good. I mean, Pikmin 1 is good. Sorry. I'm, I'm losing my mind. I'm still talking about 4. 1 is a really good game. It's a certified hood classic. It's the game that got me hooked onto the series. Um, it's really it's really fun. It's got a it, it's a little not beginner friendly because it's um it's one of the games that has the timer. So like you got 30 days to live essentially. Uh, you gotta get these pieces. To, so to it, live, it, bro. <laughs> oh yeah, it, it is to live. Your oxygen tank will run out in 30 days. So it's time for you to fix your ship with, with using the Pikmin to find the ship pieces. Mm. That's the story of the game. Pikmin 2 is a little bit more friendly. There's still a timer, but you have Louie now, who's your partner, and you can leave him in areas, and then you can do uh, different mechanics. Gotcha. Yeah. So games. the games like from 1 to 3 are kind of progressive like, as far as like the number of like resources that you're able to use, yes. where it's like the first one's excessively like limiting in comparison. Mm -hmm. Got it. And uh, I'm glad I'm <clears> glad that Nintendo is out here doing this. This is not the first instance we've had this. Bayonetta, the entire Bayonetta series is on Switch now. They purposely made sure to have one, two, three all together on one console. And now we're seeing this with Pikmin. Um, I do want to bring up the question that mm -hmm. is Metroid right now. I'm going to be, I'm going to be hundred percent honest with y'all. Metroid Prime was not here in any capacity. And that does lead me to being the question, how mm. long, how much further out is Prime 4? Because I don't think Nintendo, having seen them put Pikmin 1 and 2 on here, makes me think, okay, Prime 2 and 3 are going to be on here at this point. Because mm -hmm. they've been very like specific about trying to port these like older GameCube games and, and making sure that the series is intact. Um, so I kind of believe two and three are ready to go too. It's just a matter of when they want to drop them. Yeah. Maybe, maybe prime four is a little bit further out than we thought. I, I still believe it's 2024, right? But I, maybe it's not early 2024. Maybe it's summer. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe they needed something in between and then we're going to have to wait a little bit on two, but yeah. I guess we'll have to see because honestly, like they can take as long as they need to, because honestly, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> No, seeing like the level of prompt, I mean, granted, these are different developers, so I really shouldn't be like that, but like just seeing like the potential of sequels, like from I guess recently of this year, like or yeah, like God of War, for example, that was wait, that was technically last year, but uh, like Tears of the Kingdom, like seeing yeah. the evolution from, from those two games, and I, I'm trying to imagine like what could they possibly be doing with Metro Prime to make it like after like years. Since like mm. the, the the last out of corruption, how will they evolve what, that? It was five, six. Who it was seven, really it seven, really seven. It really was around the Wii era, but yeah, yeah it was. Uh, I mean, that was like the introduction of just like the motion controls and pointing and aiming. So it's like, how do you evolve from that? How how do you expand the like the world and mm -hmm. honestly like implement any type of new like functions from like other ones, even like like 2d size scrolling ones and with the inclusion of dread now how do you yeah. evolve that and i think they if it's taken them this long especially when they had to like bring back the og like pseudo who did the metroid prime games and yeah yeah, yeah. I, it's gonna be a bit of a wait yeah but yeah um also on top of this this is the pikmin one and two release is kind of why i think they'll do luigi's mansion one yeah with dark moon because i feel like at this point they're just trying to get the series together. I feel we're, that. we're in a very unique point with Nintendo right now where whatever their next console is, mm. at this point, it better be backwards compatible. This is not the Wii U, right? Like this is a successful console. Multiple people are playing these games. Multiple mm. people want to make sure we can keep playing these games. So if the next console is backwards compatible, you already have a library out the gate. That's big. Because that that was the big selling point of the 3DS. Mm -hmm. You already have a DS library. So, I hope. I hope we'll see how this goes. Yeah. Uh, but Pikmin 1 and 2, big news for that one is we are getting a physical copy of 1 and 2. Let's go. 
I figured I figured as much. If they're getting shadow drop like prior games, then and they do the shadow drop, then they'll just come up with like physicals later. They're not they're not doing the the mistake of Metroid Prime Remastered though. It's not two weeks away. They're mm-hmm. waiting till September for this one. Oh yeah, just so they can get a lot yeah. of got it. But the but the box is Pikmin one plus Pikmin two. So both games on one cart. Yeah, I swear. But- Thank you. Thank you, Nintendo. That's what I wanted. That's really cool. Uh, another fun fact, uh, really quick fun fact. Are uh, they updated Pikmin three? Uh, I, I I was actually looking at the uh, the store about that. I was like, oh, they really did. They, they want to stay Pikmin in the brand. 3, yeah, to to fix the logo to match the rest of the series, and I kind of feel like it's a bit of a downgrade. But hey, what personally, what? yeah, no, no, I feel they're, you. That I'm on the same I, page. As far as I also know, they're also going to re-release Pikmin 3 Deluxe with that new title on the box. Huh, that's funny. It, yeah, so it's like for anybody who never was able to pick it up, I know our friend Manuel, he's been, he's now interested in playing the series. Now mm. So he was like, oh, well, if 3 is going to get re-released, I can just get that. And I was like, there you go. So, yeah, there you go. Just to keep it uniform. I, I, I get that. I respect that. And then we got into the last bit of headlines. Uh, but they opened with a banger on this mm. headline. And it was Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1. I can't believe I was on the nose with that one. Thank God. That was, I was like, whoa, Phil. <laughs> this, yeah, I know. I know. Crazy. Here, so, to break down what is in this collection, because they added more than what I initially thought there was going to be, I, I'm shook at what's in this collection. Um, we have, this is the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Ooh, Volume dude. 1. This is coming out on Switch, PlayStation 5. Xbox Series X and very interesting choices because they're not PS4 or Xbox One games. Mm-hmm. It's very specifically modern consoles. So with the collection, you are getting Metal Gear, the original MSX version created by Hideo Kojima. Mm-hmm. Metal Gear Sol- Metal Gear 2, Solid Snake, the sequel to that game, also by Kojima. Metal Gear Solid, the original PS1 game, in all its beautiful, blocky glory. It looks great. Uh, but it is the integral version. That means you're also getting the second disc, which would or the second release of it that has the VR missions, which is essentially like challenge mode. Like it's like these challenging like levels that are like, hey, put your sneaking skills to the test. Okay, so okay. that's a cool inclusion. Essentially, it's the complete version of Metal Gear Solid One mm-hmm. in its original form. Great. Got it. Got it. Metal Gear Solid Two: Sons of Liberty. This is the substance version. So there are when you can aim. Uh, the substance version is essentially uh, the, they took the mechanic from Twin Snakes, where when you're aiming, it's in first person, and they mm-hmm. implemented it into two games, three, two and three. And so substance adds that, and essentially it's like the definitive version of the games. Mm-hmm. So it's the substance version, but it's also the HD version. So you're at least getting a cleaner image. It's the it's the HD version from 360 PS3. Mm-hmm. So it's so you're getting that. That's great. You're getting Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater HD as well, which is, again, the substance version and cleaner visuals. What a thrill. Um, <laughs> Darkness and silence of the night. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and then and then the crazy part, because the, the, the next two games would never have been released under Kojima's watch. Mm-hmm. If Kojima had still been with the series, these games would have never seen the light of day. You are getting... Metal Gear for the NES and Sa- Snake's Revenge for the NES. That's crazy. Those games have no involvement from Kojima whatsoever. He hates those ports. As a matter of fact, they are considered the worst games in the series. But it's really cool from a historical standpoint to have them on here. Mm-hmm. And it's not really like, oh man, I, I need to buy this collection for this game specifically. It's not like that. It's just the fact that they're rounding out the package with more than just what you think it is. Mm. And that's kind of what I wanted from this. I didn't want it to just be one, two, three, call it a day. Yeah. I wanted the Origins. I wanted the 8 bits. I wanted the random games as well in the series. Because we're also getting the PSP exclusive Graphic Novel 1 and Graphic Novel 2. Bro. Which is crazy. Those are so good. They're digital graphic novels. So like they're like watching cutscenes in movies. It's great. Hmm. Holy crap, all of this in one package. Um, physical versions have been confirmed for all three platforms. So let's let's clap them for that. Now let's trash them. So <laughs> Konami, 
if you were gonna have to do this for the Switch, I don't even know why bother with a physical copy because the game is 50 gigs Ooh. Ooh. on the Switch. Ooh, like digitally altogether? Everything. Everything. Got it. The That's cartridge, the physical cart, only contains 2.4 gigs of the game. <laughs> <laughs> so my understanding is i i think what they're gonna do is it's gonna be like a bioshock the collection where some of the games some of each game is in the cart mm -hmm. and then you get to pick and choose what you install i guess okay i'm assuming that's what it is because they're considering it as it's an installation for the two NES or the two MSX games together. Mm -hmm. That's one app. They're considering Metal Gear Solid One is one app, two is one app, three is one app, and then the bonus the the NES games are part of the bonus game of the bonus content, which is a separate app. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming when you pop in the cart, five different applications are going to show up, and you get to pick and choose what you want to install and download. Mm -hmm. So. Here's my problem. I'm really excited for this collection. I love the Metal Gear Solid series. Mm. I think I'm just going to get it on PS5. As much as I want to play these on the go, I think the fact that the physical copy is on PlayStation and Xbox... Are the complete ones then, like, Switch is, like... Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it was it's a good effort, but it's, like, at that point, you know... Yeah. Uh, let's see. I looked at the time and I'm running out of ranting the economy. I still got one more game to really okay. talk about. Okay, okay. All right, let's see. We're gonna be conscious Vampire Survivors. This. Finally. <laughs> on the <laughs> Switch, let's go. Finally, and it has four player local co op. That's not on any other platform. Uh, they did confirm that that update is coming to Xbox. Phil, you already know what we gotta do. What well, what okay, must be gotta, done? We gotta we gotta play some Vampire Survivors mm. co op. That sounds cool. I'm so down. But yeah, Vampire Survivors coming to Switch. Hell yeah, I'll be there. Headbangers, Rhythm Royale. That was huh? so <laughs> out of left what? field. But you know, I don't hate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't hate it. Oh, here's a big one. Penny's Big Breakaway. That was, huh? <laughs> that game looks so good. It's a 3D platformer from the team who made Sonic Mania. This is Christian Whitehead's brand new project after he left Sega. That's <laughs> dude. It looks so good. My boy T Lopes has confirmed the composer of the game. Huh? So we are we are in the money with that game. That game looks great. Uh, only problem is it's early 2024, so we're still a little bit away. That's fair. But, Take this on. Uh, that was the last 2024 announcement. So we got quick switch lineup for 2024. Prince of Persia: The Lost Crown, a new Peach game, Luigi's Mansion: Dark Moon Remastered, and Penny's Big or Penny's Big Breakaway. Mm -hmm. That's you got me. Uh, we got Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass Wave 5. Uh, they showed a new track, which is the new new track, right? Like, mm. the other seven are going to be remakes or remasters. Uh, squeaky clean sprint. It looks cool. I like the bathroom aesthetic. Like, we're jumping through tubs and hovering <laughs> above soap and stuff and sinks. It's really cool. Mm. Uh, but they didn't really show much. And that's kind of weird because they also said summer. And then I was like, uh, last time is I checked, not, we are summer? in the summer. <laughs> this what, summer, like right I now. Gonna, <laughs> I think it's gonna come out next month. It's gonna just gonna be a shadow drop. That's fair. Yeah, like yeah. But they announced okay. the three new characters. We got PD Piranha coming back from Double Dash. Nice. We got Wiggler, our boy Wiggler coming back from Seven. Nice, nice, nice. And coming from Tor, I say this in quotation marks. Tor. Uh, it's Kamek. And Kamek feels cool because he feels like a complete coming like back to circle with the series because Kamek was actually in Super Mario Kart in the testing phases. Huh. So that's really cool to see him in this game. Uh, next one. Star Ocean, the second story R. This God was, damn, that game looks That was cool. amazing to look at. That game looks so good. It is uh I got my, my games mixed up. Star Ocean one is the game we never got. Star Ocean second story is the game we got, and that's our first game in America for PS1. So this looks great. Huh. I'll have to uh, look really at the history. Seeing it. What was Are first departure? Aware? Sorry. Sorry, that was that first was... departure was the first uh remake of the first game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh WarioWare move it. I was shocked I'd, that they were gonna continue. I didn't, think, I didn't think we'd get another WarioWare so soon. That's great. Mm -hmm. And it's the one that everyone wants. It is 
in Japan, this game has another name. Hmm. It's called Maiden Wario, because that's what the series is called. Maiden Wario Super Smooth Moves. So this Super. is a sequel. This is a sequel to the Wii Classic WarioWare Smooth Moves, which is considered the mm. best WarioWare game. So you got me. I'm I'm super in to to mess around with that. I might do a live stream of that. Just be moving around. Gotcha. All good. right, all right. Uh, and then they went into this weird part about Nintendo Live 2023. All right, it's happening. They confirmed the Tears of the Kingdom amiibos. The ones that were rumored, they're there. Zelda's getting an amiibo, which looks amazing. Ganondorf looks amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm in for that one. I'm so crazy that they have amiibos that they're willing to sell to you in 2023. Anyway, continue. <laughs> and then the final announcement, the big one. This the... is my last like bit of like stretch for me. Okay. Before I gotta get out of here. But look, I had a lot, I was very nervous going into this. Yeah, I and knew, rumors were true. We got we were gonna get a 2D Mario here, and everybody knows me. I am the Mario guy, like in this group of friends. Like I love this series to death. This is my favorite series of all time. Mm. It's very rare when I get a mainline new game in the series, right? So when I had heard there was a 2D Mario, I was a little skeptical because I was like I've been so burned on the new Super Mario Brothers games at this point. I love them. I think they're great games. But that aesthetic hasn't changed since 2006. Mm. My fears went completely away as soon as it started. And I was just... You were taken. Justin, I I passed out. Huh? (laughs) I, I couldn't breathe with what I was watching. Oh, okay. The way he jumps... The way he just does that pose, and I'm like, oh my god! And then like the way the the frames of animation looks, and the way he had, looks like claymation, kind of way the way that he walked into the pipe and he leaves his hat behind, and he grabs it real quick, and he pops on. He's like, hmm, his hmm, hmm. his running animation, it, he he his little feet, and he has like this smirk on his face, like Sonic. He looks like fucking Sonic when he's running, and when he jumps, it's the Mario three jump. And when he's swimming, he t- the 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 sound effect is so clean. I think it's Super Nintendo because it's like the the whoop 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 rollerblading Koopas. <laughs> it's it's everything I wanted for a two <laughs> D Mario game. It's everything I said <clears throat> in that predictions list, and I was like, I wish I just wanted to be different. I got different. Super Mario Brothers Wonder has become my most anticipated game this year. <laughs> Fuck Starfield. <laughs> <clears throat> Starfield, I've never been. I'm going to be biased with you. I don't know if I can. <clears throat> I think Breath of the Wild or uh, Tears of the Kingdom was my best game I've played so far this year. But yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if I have the strength to not put Mario Brothers Wonder at number one yet. I'm not sure. <laughs> you, you know what you must do, but you don't know if you have the strength enough to do it. Um, yeah, it looks, I, I need it to be October 20th already. Um, Bro. that seen... is everything I wanted for the Mario game, the way it looks, the way it play, and the new mechanics that they're throwing in with the wonder seeds, the dreamlike aesthetic. That's that way. It's not just your normal grass, water, lava there's this like really cool beautiful grassy field with like these crazy mechanics where the pipes are freaking out on you mm-hmm. um i saw this cyberspace area i was like what the fuck am <laughs> i looking at uh he can grind he can, he can grind on rails and he can grab onto rails it's four player again god that <clears> sounds <throat> terrible but I'm ready. that sounds like a chaotic time Yoshi I'm in. looks like Mario World Yoshi. He doesn't even look like modern Yoshi. He yeah. has the long neck. Uh, Daisy's playable. I know. Daisy's I know. Steffi was freaking out. Yeah. Um. I. <laughs> that's all I wanted. <laughs> that's literally all you had to show me. I could have had this whole direct could have been nothing but duds, and then that one game would have saved that whole direct for me. Mm-hmm. I. I, I don't know where else to go with that. Uh, also, Sonic Superstars. I was gonna bring it back real quick. Yeah, uh, yeah. The confirmed release date is October seventeenth. Whoa. 
That's uh, the same week as Mario Wonder. That's that's really like this isn't like a horizon where it's like you know it's gonna get absolutely shoveled in. Like that this is like two of them competing now. Competing for each other. It's the good old days, <clears throat> man, dude. It's the good old days. That's that's oh my god. I cannot believe Mario Wonder is a real game. I need it. Like bad. It's it's everything I wanted to see from the 2D series going forward. And mm-hmm. it's not even like not, not even on a visual standpoint. It feels like them changing a lot of the way the levels work. Mm-hmm. The levels look more grounded. Like they look more plausible, like in design. Like kind of like Donkey Kong Country Returns, where like it's not just floating platform. Sorry, there you go. Like this actually looks like hey, there's this floating platform because there's a mountain here. That makes sense. Koopa it's slanted because Koopa Koopas are rollerblading. Mm-hmm. And then there's new enemy designs, there's new types of things I saw in there. That's barely scratching the surface because they don't just show you all this and not say anything else later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. Uh, yeah, honestly, like <clears throat> we've we've gotten like different uh Mario games, but they have they've always had kind of like the new design. If not, they had like the 3D land design, but that's not like the your traditional 2D. <clears throat> congestion sorry mm-hmm. but justin uh i'm gonna have to go but okay uh sorry yeah. uh real quick uh i i think it looks absolutely gorgeous and this is the the tried and true 2d mario for the the modern console so that's all i wanted to say about it all right justin everybody peace out all right he's he's gonna be gone show out, but yeah okay mario, mario wonder you gotta buy it, mm-hmm. it looks so good yeah he had he had Bro had to go like real quick. Also, what? Why am I? Why am I showing up as a double? I have like this uh one person screen in case of these types of scenarios, and for some reason I have myself showing as uh, a double <laughs> for some reason. Uh, I think it might be linked to uh the other bit here. I'm just trying to figure that out before I uh, close off everything. It's not that one. <laughs> it's it's that one. All right, perfect. Actually, let me just double check. Yeah. No, oh, no, no. For some reason that just turns on. Anyway, uh, the last thing I wanted to add to that, uh, I know he had to go. Uh, I don't know how he would feel about it if I uh, if I brought this up, but uh, considering considering we're still within this year, um, I'm gonna make a prediction. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna write this down or something like that. I should probably just make a note about like predictions of 2023 and then just like keep that there. Um, I think. This new Mario games could be coupled with a whole Nintendo Switch OLED version of it, or edition, similar to um, which one calls it, Tears of the Kingdom. Maybe not satisfy his grip, no, but like Nintendo Switch OLED, they might have a Mario Super Mario Brothers Wonder edition of it. I'm not sure how they'll. I'm not sure how they'll approach that. I think they'll have to go with a whole new color scheme than like other like Mario anniversary like type ones where it's like just red joy cons all around they'll have to work with that but yeah bet you it's gonna be like something like that but yeah that's pretty much everything uh honestly i think we went through everything that we could have possibly like talked about this past week um from like tears of the kingdom me clearing through that final fantasy 16 being released uh the nintendo direct was obviously the biggest thing and honestly in my in my opinion, as far as the review of the entire thing, I think it was fantastic. There was a lot of games that, like, I specifically was, like, really interested in, for sure. And I think it was, like, very strongly, like, weighted towards Mario, which is, you know, the bread and butter. And it makes sense because the Mario movie did so well. So, yeah, no. A lot to expect. And now, all of a sudden, Nintendo is back in the race as far as, like, uh, just games to look forward to in the, the second half and even, like, 2024 just games in general so alrighty that's pretty much everything i'm gonna go ahead and call it here sign off from here guys i appreciate everyone for tuning in for this episode of dang podcast uh we did have this earlier just so like phil can uh say his speech uh about nintendo direct and how much he's looking forward to 2023 he's eating good and we also will as well <laughs> but that's gonna be it uh, again appreciate everyone for tuning in and uh yeah see you guys in the next one Hashtag bye, everybody, as I try to find... Here it is.